So in today's video, we're going to be looking at how you can get started with Microsoft Teams cloud cooling capabilities. We're going to be going through assigning licenses to requesting phone numbers in the cloud to assigning that to a user and then looking at the end user experience at the end of all of that. We're going to be talking about what's called Microsoft cooling plans and there's multiple ways to kind of get your phone system going. But this is a really nice all in one simple solution to get started with. And it doesn't require any infrastructure other than needing some licensing, which will be things like the phone system license and a cooling plan, which equates to some minutes that you can use every month. I'm going to put links in the description, which is going to cover all of the cooling plan licensing where it's available because it's not available today in every location in the world and just some general information you need to know about cooling plans but I want this to be a quick look at how to get started so let's just dive on in. Okay, so before we dive in and look how easy it is in Microsoft Teams to assign a phone number to our user, well, I want to show you the user experience here for Alex. So right now, we don't have any phone number assigned. And what we can only do is really make calls within our organization. We can't make calls externally. So for example here, I could go ahead and call Adele, and this is going to go over voice over IP or VoIP. So this call we can see is successful. However, if we go ahead and try and call an external number, what we're going to see here it says, sorry, we couldn't connect you. So if I dismiss this, it now lets us know that they couldn't complete the call because of our current calling license, because we can only call people within our organization. And well, you need to go ahead and talk to IT. Luckily for us, we are IT. So now let's go ahead and switch gears and look at how we can set up Alex here to be able to make use of Microsoft's cloud cooling. Okay, so we're now here inside the Microsoft 365 Admin Center and our first step is getting all the licensing that Alex needs to be able to make the most of Microsoft Teams cooling. So because Alex has an Office 365 E5 license, that means he has access to phone system. And the phone system license gives you the ability to have all sorts of features from caller ID, call forwarding, call queues, and so on and so forth. I'm not going to go through all of the features here, but in the description, I'll put a link so you can read all about the phone system license. However, at this point, as we saw earlier, Alex can only make calls with inside his organization. And we want to make sure that Alex can make calls to anyone and receive calls from anyone external to his org as well. So to be able to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to go down to billing and then we're going to go to licenses. And then from here, I can see all the licenses that this tenant has. And we said earlier that everyone has access to the Office 365 E5. But what we need to add is the Microsoft 365 domestic cooling plan. And this means that Alex can call anyone within his region that's assigned within Office 365. Of course, there's international plans and so on and so forth. But again, I'll put a link in the description so you can read all about the different plans. But what we're going to do is we're going to go into the Office 365 cooling plan. And now I can assign a license. Of course, I'm just showing you a quick example of this. In production, you're going to want to go use Azure Active Directory group based licensing, but just because I'm doing one user, we'll do it nice and simple. So I'm going to do a sign license and then I'm going to go ahead and find Alex Wilbur here. And at this point, I can just go ahead and do a sign. And now, once that's assigned, we can now see that we have Alex and our admin having a calling plan within Microsoft Teams. So at this point, we have all the licenses we need. We have the phone system license, we have a calling plan. Now let's jump over to the Teams admin console for our next step. All right, so now from the Teams admin center, we need to go ahead and get Alex a phone number. But before we do that, we need to create an emergency address. Every single phone number in Microsoft Teams needs to be assigned to one of these emergency addresses. So for that, we need to go to locations and then emergency addresses. And then from here, you can add multiple addresses if you have more than one office, for example. But I'm just going to go ahead, hit add, and then we're going to do Contoso LA office, and then country or region, we're going to do United States. And then from here on address, I'm just going to put in the location in Los Angeles. And at this point, it's going to give you a nice map of where that's located. And you can change the organization name if you need. But I'm just going to go ahead and hit save. 
And at this point, we now have an emergency address that we can assign phone numbers to. So our next stage then, now we have the address, is to go down to voice and then phone numbers. And at this point, we can go and order a new phone number for my organization or if you already have some numbers that you want to put across, you can go through that as well. I'm not going to show that experience today, but just know you can do it. So I'm going to go ahead and do add. So first up, we need to give this order a name. I'm just going to do Contoso LA numbers. And then I'm just going to put one LA number for the description. And then for the location, we're just going to go ahead and do United States. Now at this point, we need to choose the number type. And you can see there's all sorts of different ones here from call queue to auto attendant. But because we're assigning a phone number to a user, we're gonna choose the user subscriber. And now at this point, we need to say how many numbers we want. I'm gonna select one. And of course I could add many more if I needed to. And then we need to choose the actual number location. So because I created that emergency address earlier, I'm gonna search for Los for Los Angeles, and we can now see my org Contoso. So I'm gonna select that, and then I have to choose the area code, which I'm gonna choose as 213, and I know that's correct. So at this point, I can now go ahead and hit next. And it's gonna go look for some numbers within that local area. And there we have it. It's reserved a number for us. I have 10 minutes to make my decision if I'm happy with this phone number, and I am. So I'm gonna go ahead and select place order. And now that it's been placed, we can just go ahead and hit finish. And there we have it. We now have our first phone number within Microsoft Teams. So I'm gonna select this number, and then I'm gonna go ahead and hit edit because what we want to do now is actually assign this number to Alex. So on the right hand side here under assign to, I'm going to go and type in Alex and then we're going to choose Alex Wilbur and assign. And then, as I said earlier, we need to make sure that we have an emergency location. So I'm just going to put in here, I'm going to do loss again and then choose my Los Angeles location. And I can choose then to email my user if I want them to know all about this number that I've just assigned to them. I'm gonna leave that on and then hit apply. So there we have it, we have our first phone number ordered and assigned to one of our users, in this case, Alex, and that was so quick and easy to do. So just think about what does your process look like today? And could this be simpler using Microsoft Teams and the cooling plans? Of course, I could then go to users and we'll see here that Alex truly does have a phone number assigned. So at this point, let's go ahead and look at the end user experience. Okay, so we're now here in Alex's emails and we can see that we got an email from team saying, ring, ring, you got yourself a new phone number and you can start making and receiving calls within the next 48 hours. Then if we dive into the Teams client, the first thing you'll notice is that Alex now has a work number that's being shown here in the Teams client. The other thing we can do at the top here where we used to have type a name and we could just choose someone internally and call via VoIP, now we can select a number as well or use the large keypad here as well. If I then hit call, this is instead of just failing instantly like we saw earlier, it's now gonna call outside of Alex's organization. So with that being said, of course, there's so many more things that we can configure here, whether it's a voicemail, call queue, so on and so forth, but we're gonna to touch those in other videos. I will put a load of links in the description for more information around calling plans and how to get started. The other thing to note is there are a whole host of different Teams devices that you can use as certified for cooling, whether that's desk phones, headsets, earbuds, you name it. I'll put a link again down below. Well, hopefully that's shown you how easy it is to get started with no infrastructure required to get enterprise grade cloud cooling. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure you like or subscribe and we'll see you next week for another video.